One of the more troubling recent developments in terms of online internet content has been the rise in so-called fake news. So what's fake news? Fake news is are you know articles that are put online that are designed to look like legitimate news sites that are either misleading or in certain cases completely and 100% fabricated. And what's happening is you know, the fact that it's so easy to create content online and so cheap to publish things online means that if I, I can very easily create completely fictitious websites that don't correspond to any legitimate news agency and use them to broadcast stories. And of course, the stories that fake news sites post are not there accidentally. They're not designed to be funny unless you're The Onion, which I think everybody knows at this point is fake, except maybe a few people. Um, but these stories are designed to drive traffic. So particularly in the run-up to the recent presidential election, we saw many cases where fake news sites were created to publish damaging stories about you know, one or both candidates. And Facebook, in particular, has been used to drive traffic to those stories. So people post these stories on their news feeds, people click on them, that drives traffic to the website. And that sort of should help answer the question of why would anybody do this? Because the reason is quite simple, money. The people that run these sites, the cost of operating a site like this is very small. Remember, a newspaper, an actual newspaper, has real costs. It has reporters that it has to pay, it has a building, it has presses to print you know, actual copies of the newspaper. And so fake news sites, on the other hand, don't have any reporters because the stuff they're uh, creating is just made up. And so just a small amount of ad revenue can actually be quite profitable for these sites. So this is the model sell advertising space on these fake news sites, drive traffic with provocative stories, and use that to monetize the ability of the internet to easily create very legitimate looking, completely fake content. Let's look at an example of this. So um, this was one of the more sort of well-publicized examples that happened during the 2016 election cycle. Um, this is a, uh, this, this, uh, this article has been taken down by the site, but Thanks to the magic of the Internet Archive and the Wayback Machine, uh, we're able to get at it. So uh, this was something that was published with this particular URL, denverguardian.com. And you can see the URL looks pretty legit. It looks like something that you actually might get if you send a link to a story on the Denver Times, which I think is a legitimate uh, publication, or the Washington Post, or something like this. So you know they go to a certain amount of effort to make these sites look legitimate. And if you just browse to this site, um, it you know it looks like it might be a legitimate news site. It has different categories. It has an obituaries category, which I suspect is either content that's been slurped down from another site or completely fake because nobody cares. But these are touches that are designed to make the site look legitimate so that when someone finds themselves on this website and reads this particular headline, FBA agents suspected of Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. This is totally fake. This is totally untrue. In fact, I'm not even sure why I'm putting this up here because somebody's probably going to watch it and believe it. It's not true. Fake. Let me see if I, I'll get him. Let me create a visual indicator of, um, of the degree to which this is true. I think my, I'm out of my markers. Anyway, this is not true. Um, not true. Fake. Incorrect. Fallacious. Wrong. Made up. False. But people that found their way to this site, I mean, look at it. It's got a nice logo. You know, it's got this little news tab. Um, it has a photo with the photo credit. Um, it's got a weather report over here on the sidebar. Doesn't that make it look legitimate? So people that do this are preying on one of the things that makes it, the internet makes it very easy to do, which is create things that look legitimate. This site looks legitimate, and that's not hard to do. It's not like they had to spend a lot of time on this. This is something that's very easy for someone with even a small amount of web development uh, abilities. You could just start with uh, content from a site like a legitimate news site, just change the banner logo up here, you know, move some things around, change some of the format a little bit, and voila, I have a fake news site. 
Unfortunately, these stories were seen by lots of people. And a lot of people, I suspect, did not necessarily understand that what they were looking at was something that was entirely 100% made up. And there are variants on this. There are other sites that traffic in stories that are not necessarily completely made up because they could be sued. So instead of being completely made up, they're only mildly um, mildly misleading, uh, full of innuendo and things like that, but but still, so, so this is an issue. Um, and I think over time, I mean, my simple suggestion to you if you are one of the many people now who relies on Facebook for news is if you read something like this, try to verify it using a site that you trust. I'm not saying you have to use a liberal left-wing media website, who cares? We understand that different sites have different viewpoints, but find a legitimate site and try to verify that this is true before you start posting it or start spreading it on social media because this type of you know fake news unfortunately has the potential to influence a lot of people's beliefs and the internet makes it very very easy to spread this type of stuff